All right, I spent all day talking about cruisers, and I need to get back to my roots with some good old-fashioned squid missiles. That's right, we're taking a look at seven bikes that are fast and can be found for about $5,000. That's right, my sweet squid. If you've got a couple grand lying around, pick one of these bikes on this list and it will send you into a coffin real quick. Now, when I say fast, I'm not talking about how a Ninja 400 feels pretty quick and a little bit quicker than a car. I'm talking about go to jail fast. Bikes that can see north of 150 miles an hour and get you there frighteningly quick. Best part, they're all from the advent of motorcycle modern safety tech and ride-by-wire throttles, so it's just you and the bike, baby. Hope you've been practicing your threshold braking or take it to the track. Either way, these bikes are pretty much all sport bikes, though I did sprinkle in a few naked bike gems because not everyone wants to go out and dress up like a Power Ranger and chase lap times for some reason. No rules or restrictions today, just some dirt cheap bikes you can buy right now, assuming you've got a few grand in the bank. Let's get right into this one. Number 7 on today's list is the Suzuki Bandit 1200. Yes, they did make a 1250S, thank you, I'm well aware of the fact of that Mr. or Mrs. Comet person, but the listings I saw for the 1250S was over our threshold of 5 grand. By comparison, you can find Bandit 1200s from 97 to 04, all going for around 3 or 4 grand. They'll be relatively high mileage, but don't let that scare you. If there's one thing I've learned about Suzuki's, it's that they're basically indestructible. Trust me, I'm basically trying to kill the Hobgoblin at this point, and it won't stay dead down. So what are you getting for your meager investment? An 1157cc inline 4 that was air and water cooled, unfortunately carbureted, but still capable of putting down 98 horsepower and 68 foot-pounds of torques. That's not bad, especially when you consider that for a street bike, you want lower horsepower numbers and more torques for all those dank nooners. It's a heavy bike, but it can still hit a top speed of 147 miles per hour, which is within striking distance of our 150 mile per hour goal. And it can do a standing quarter mile in 11.7 seconds. That's faster than basically most modern sports cars. One weird thing about this bike is that it only had a 5-speed gearbox, but unlike Harley's of the DRZ400, an inline 4th only 5-speed won't make you want to ride off a bridge due to vibration. Think about it like you're always cruising in the power band. What's wild is you can still find some Bandit 1200s with ABS, which is always a nice feature on a street bike, and one you need to often sacrifice on a dirt cheap fast boy bike. Now, for my money, I'd save a few more bucks and get the 1250. You get more torque, six gears, fuel injection, and liquid cooling, so keep your ear to the ground to your local markets, but if you're just looking for cheap and fast right now, then grab the 1200. Do you need some help finding a cheap bike to start on? Or are you worried an ad might be too good to be true? Maybe you need some help fixing up your bike or you just want to hang out with yours truly. Either way, you should check out our Discord server over on yamanube.co. We've got all kinds of riders from dirt boys to gimp suit wearing track rats to leather daddies on cruisers all hanging out in one place. Whether you're a new rider looking for some advice on how to get started or a vet looking for some people to flex with, we've got you covered. Also, you'll get to participate in our weekly Yamcast live streams, get exclusive videos and behind the scenes looks into what's going on on the channel. The Discord boys already know what the next intermediate bike is, by the way. If you want to get on all that good stuff and win a motorcycle at the same time, click the link down below and check out yamnoob.co to get signed up. Now on to a proper sport bike, one with some racing pedigree and is sure to elicit satisfied non with the hint of jealousy from other fast boys, the 2002 Honda CBR 900 RR Fireblade, otherwise known as the 954. This was the last blade that Honda released before going to the 1000cc leader bike engine, but despite being down 45ccs, the 954 is plenty fast to spank just about anything on four wheels. We're talking 154 horsepower and 75 foot pounds of torques with a wet weight of only 424 pounds. This thing is a proper rocket ship capable of speeds of 178 miles per hour and a standing quarter mile of 10.4 seconds. The fun part is in the quarter mile, you're already doing 133 miles per hour, so you'd better hold on tight. You've got all the stuff you'd want on a leader bike like fully adjustable suspension, drop dead sexy looks, and a great sound, which honestly I think sounds better than a lot of modern leader bikes and none of the things you don't. There's no traction control, no wheelie control, there's no nannies of any kind, it's all down to your right wrist. But enough of me evangelizing for the better days of sport bikes, what's this thing gonna cost you? Well, this one's gonna stretch the budget just a bit, but if you're willing to spend a little over our $5,000 goal, you can get a clean one from $6,000 from a dealer or a higher mileage bike for about 4,500 bucks. Like the Bandit though, don't let the mileage scare you on a bike like this. There's two things that are certain in life, death and Japanese inline four motorcycles from the early 2000s. Now, because it doesn't have any tech baked in, I wouldn't recommend going from a Ninja 400 to a 954RR because that's quite a jump in power. But if you're bopping around on a 600 or an intermediate naked bike and want a classic super sport to add to the stable, look no further than the Honda CBR 954RR. Number five is actually gonna go to two bikes because I wanted to talk about both of them. 
the Yamaha FZ1 and R1. That's right, the first example of bike power, leader bike, and slightly less big power naked bike using the same engine, or at least most famous example. Cue the triggered 919 and 599 Hornet boys. The pre cross plane R1 is a gem of a bike that basically gets tossed in the garbage the minute the Yamaha announced they were bringing the cross plane crank from the M1 GP bike to the streets. But that means that you can get them for pennies on the dollar. You can get these R1s new as 2005 for $5,000, and sometimes less if you know where to look. For that money, you're buying 998 cc's of inline four, putting down 171 horsepower and 78 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, it's not the 200 that the modern R1 is putting down, but let's be honest with ourselves here for a minute. There's no difference to the average weekend track day rider between 171 and 200. We're just not capable of wielding that much power, but you're still getting the aggressive ergos, flashy looks, and massive sweeping analog tack to show you all the info you need. But if you're looking for the daily rider alternative, you can get an FZ1 all day for four grand. The best part I got going with one of these bikes is that they're largely used as sporters by dads who still want to feel cool, so they'll come with hard cases, tasteful period correct exhaust systems, and all sorts of other creature comforts. You do see a pretty big drop in power down to 147 horsepower, but your torque number is basically the same at 77. The suspension is not adjustable, but hey, most street riders don't even mess with it, so who cares, right? Seriously though, if you have fancy adjustable suspension, you should get it sorted for your riding style. Don't be like Spite with this big fancy sumo and top shelf suspension left on the stock settings. Seriously, go get it updated. Maybe I'll steal his bike when he's not looking and get it done. Regardless of which bike you choose, the R1 or the FC1 offer tons of smiles per gallon and all for the price of a brand new Ninja 400. Number four today is going to go to our first Euro bike entry, the Ducati Supersport 900. For those of you who are up to date on your Ducati trivia, will know that the original Monster poached the Supersport's frame when they were first designing it, which gave it the distinctive trellis look. Well, if you're going to go fast and look good doing it, then the Supersport 900 is the bike for you. You can pick up Supersports from the entire line of bikes dating back to the early 90s, but I'm going to suggest the 1999 to 2002 range because those can be had for only $4,000. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but then Ducatis were pretty slow compared to their Japanese counterparts this time. The Super Sport is packing the old Ducati air-cooled 904cc V-twin, putting down only 80 horsepower and 57 foot-pounds of torques, basically the same as my Scrambler. But it can still hit a top speed of 143 miles per hour and do the standing quarter mile 11.4 seconds, which is not bad for a bike that you could theoretically start on if you're a little older. The best part about this bike is that it's not carbureted, which is a godsend. Can you imagine having to work on a Ducati carb? I mean, the modern Ducatis barely work, and if you look at them funny, you need to get the Desmos checked. But a carb Ducati is like asking for pain and misery, the likes of which Alighieri wrote about in his Inferno. So a cheap Ducati without the BS you might expect from owning a cheap Ducati. What's not to love? Also, you'll get showered in ladies' undergarments when you ride it. I'm joking, obviously. You'll be constantly accosted by old men at the gas station who are reminded about the good old days when you right red steed. Next up on our Eurobike list is the Triumph Daytona 955i. No, it's not the 2013 Plus Daytona 675R because unfortunately yours truly has acquired so many of them at this point it's to creating a Daytona shortage and driving the prices up. Not to mention you don't really want a Gen 1 Daytona 675 because those bikes came with built-in electrical gremlet stock from the factory. We'll probably need to wait another decade at this point for the 2013 Daytona to be on this list and I promise you if we're still making lists by then, it'll be there. But for now, we're stuck with the big boy Daytona, the 955cc triple putting down 147 horsepower and 74 foot-pounds of torque. You'll be smoking a lot of modern-day leader bikes with a bike that'll only cost you 4,000 bucks. Much like the R1, you've got all the stuff you'd want from fully adjustable suspension, lightweight, and I'd like to say looks, but in this case, it's really down to personal taste. It's not your typical sport bike with hard lines and sharp angles, and it's not a 90s bike with the old square tail, two round headlights. It's somewhere in between. It was definitely shaped by the times it was released in, and much like the old sedan looking Mustang from the early aughts. All that being said though, if you like the looks, you're in for a treat, because who doesn't love the sound of big bore triples? Number two, and yet another cheap-ish Japanese leader bike, this time is the Kawasaki Z. DX9R. This bike is nothing special, don't get me wrong, it didn't revolutionize the motorcycling landscape, but it was a very solid bike. This is the bike fast boys bought, and the only thing you care about is speed and having enough cash left over to pay off those speeding tickets. You can get a 2002 model in great shape for 3800 bucks and sometimes less if you're okay with some dings and dents, but again, we're talking about the Chipotle of motorcycles here. Cheap, and it'll get the job done. You got an 899cc inline 4 putting down 144 horsepower and 74 foot-pounds of torque, and while it's car 
carbureted to run like the Energizer Bunny so long as you don't let it sit. It ticks all the boxes with fully adjustable suspension, big stonk and 310 millimeter rotors up front, and a quarter mile time of 10.6 seconds and a top speed of 175 miles per hour. That's the fastest bike on this list so far and within spitting distance of the 186 mile per hour electronically limited sport bikes of today. One thing about these early 2000s cowboys is that they have these crazy loud graphics so you want to feel like Synthwave personified then this is the bike for you. It's also got a screaming little ninja face in the front. Just look at the two headlights and the big ram air and tell me there's not a face on there. Rounding out our list is one that's sure going to break the budget but I don't even care. It's close enough. It's the Suzuki Hayabusa! That's right, you can get yourself the world renowned king of speed for $6,000 and then just thrash about any vehicle on the road today. Yes, a modern leader bike will outrun you in the quarter mile, but if you stretch the boost's legs, it'll pretty much obliterate anything that stands in its way. You all know the drill by now, and if you don't, let old Papa Yam take you back to school. The only booster that's worth a damn is the Gen 1, that's a 99 to 2007. Don't mess around with the Gen 2 and the Gen 3, those belong in the trash next to Toshe pipes and Rurock helmets. The 1999 boost is packing the legendary 1298cc in line 4, putting down a biblical, for the time, 175 horsepower and 102 foot-pounds of torque. Yes, other bikes caught up, but no one could reach the wild claim top speed of the Busa. No, sadly, it did not get to 200 miles per hour, but it did hit 194, so that's really not too bad. Oh, and need I remind you that if for some reason you're riding around on a boost and you find yourself thinking, like many others, that you're lacking a little bit of top-end power and you think your low-down power torque could be better, well, you can literally just slap a turbo on the bike and put down some crazy power numbers. Plus, at that point, you can flip it on Craigslist for $13,000. Fact. A custom Gen 1 Busa is always worth $13,000. No more, no less. Don't believe me? Google it. Busa! You've made it to the end of a Yami Noob video. Did you like what you saw? Do you want to see more of it? Check it out, right here, just like magic, waiting for you. Click this little square, right here. More memes, more Yami, more of my face. Isn't that great?